What's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Hustle Fan TV. Back at you with a video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, all right? Ravens win versus the Browns, 23 to 20. Um, nothing flashy, but they got the job done. Um, they tried to throw it away again, you know, does his hill fumble at the end. But they got a dub, so this, this is what we're going to talk about, all right? You know, we like to give the stand-up performers of the game, and then we like to get into the game recap of what happened throughout the four quarters of, the, of today's football game, okay? So starting off with the stand-up performance, man, got to start with Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards was a guy that, one, I wasn't sure if he will play this week, and then two, when he got activated, I wasn't sure how much he would play. Not only does he play this week, obviously, he plays a lot and he plays well. All right, Gus Edwards has 16 carries and 66 yards, two touchdowns, 4.1 yards a carry, okay? Um, he was clear and obviously the Ravens lead back today, and it kind of goes to show that his recovery and J.K. Dobbins' recovery must have been very different. Like, their injuries must have been very different. Maybe Gus Edwards had more of a clean ACL tear and it wasn't as much going on. Because, obviously, with the Ravens, the Ravens with J.K. Dobbins were super cautious, snap counts, pitch counts, all these kind of things. Gus Lucky like came out the game when Gus Edwards was tired. It wasn't like, oh, well, you know, let's give him a break, things like that. It looked like, oh, okay, you're tired. Gus, go ahead and take a break. But if he wasn't tired, he was ready to go. He was in there. And he's kind of showed the importance of having a power back, man. He's a guy that the Ravens can give the ball to to actually chew down the clock in the end of these games and help um, at the end when, you know, we like we want to blow the game. You can, get the guy, you can get the ball to a guy like Gus Edwards, okay? Um, he was so clearly the lead back that Justice Hill had five carries for 26 yards. Kenyon Drake had 11 carries for uh, five yards, so half a yard a carry for Kenyon Drake. So obviously a, a game in reverse for him today. Um, but you no, know, the second on the team in yards was Lamar Jackson, 10 carries, 59 yards. But Gus Edwards was clearly the guy today, so happy to see him back. Uh, we'll see how much he plays on Thursday hitting into the Bucks game because obviously he's just coming up an injury. So to go from this game having heavy workload right into the Bucks game, we'll see. I don't know what the snap, the snap count percentages were, but Gus Edwards was on the field quite a bit, you know. So I guess that's a good thing, and hopefully he can continue building that to the next game, okay? Um, so the next guy that I want to talk about. Um, is a guy who's stacking games, and that's Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen is stacking games, man. He's playing well. He's he's blowing up the run, um, and he's not doing uh, a terrible job in coverage. Like he doesn't have any lapses. That's obvious that as you're watching the game. Now we'll see. Like you know, when all 22 film comes out, things might look different. But just watching the game, he seems to be in the right spot. He seems to be uh, playing with confidence. We're at a turning point right now, it seems like, in Patrick Queen's career where the guy that the Ravens drafted is actually the guy now that's playing on the field. You know what I mean when I say that, right? Um, he looks like a guy that maybe could actually hold on to that mantle and be the next generation of the Ravens linebacker. Uh, but look, it's only three games in a row, but you got to give him credit for what he's doing. He's playing really, really well, uh, well right now. And um, shout out to Patrick Queen, man. So um, I'm happy to see it. Like I said, I'm a guy that's always going to root for the squad. When they, when they mess up, I'm going to say it. But when they play well, we got to say it with the same voice. So shout out to Patrick Queen. He's making a lot of plays out there. Um, let me see his official stats for this game. All right. 11 tackles, 7 solos, 3 tackles for loss, 1 sack. All over the field. Great game from Patrick Queen. All right. Um, last but not least, another guy that was injured. Another guy that came back. Justin Houston. Justin Houston could have had uh, more sacks than he did today. Let me see the official number they have for him sacks. They have him down for two sacks today. He could have had four. He really could have had four today. He let Jacoby take away from his grasp at the end of the game, and I believe he missed one more as well. But two sacks in his first uh, game back, and back since being injured for a couple of weeks. Justin Houston looked like he missed a step. All right. Now, this is kind of a good and bad thing. The good... He's clearly the Ravens' best pass rusher, and it's great to have him back. The bad, he's clearly the Ravens' best pass rusher, okay? Um, that's an issue. You know, he's 30, 33 years old, something like that. Somebody could fact check me on Justin Houston's age, but um, he's an older player. This is kind of what we was hoping Owe would be. You know what I mean? Obviously, Justin Houston has all the experience, all the numbers. Um, he's a guy that's, you know, he's seen it all. So, obviously, him playing well shouldn't be a shock, but you just kind of want to see a guy like Owe take that next step. But Justin Houston is playing well. That's what that's who it's about, okay? Uh, in this in the backfield, causing havoc. He stripped Kobe Brissett. They couldn't get the ball on the one that he actually stripped them on. Uh, but great game. 
So those three guys are my main standout players for this game. Um, and they really put in the effort to help the Ravens come out with this AFC North victory. The Ravens now go to 2-0 in the AFC North. Uh, but also, I want to give a game recap of what happened in this game. All right, so, you know, starting from the first quarter, working our way down. So we can talk about um, not just the big stuff, but the little stuff that happened in this game. Okay. So the Ravens start on defense, and, it, and it's too easy. The Browns moving the ball, running the ball, passing the ball. Uh, Jacoby Brissett getting in the rhythm. David and Joku having a really, really good game. Unfortunately, he gets injured, I believe, in you know early fourth quarter, late third quarter, something like that. But um, you know, what I, what I noticed on that first drive is when they got down to the to the red zone, Ravens had a play where they they pressed on second down, got the, the Browns completed a two yard pass, good play for the Ravens, right? Then they go soft on third down. Browns get a completion. That was fourth and one or fourth and inches, really, to the Njoku. And they kind of go with the same pattern of not pressing the guys. But McDonald turned it up in the second half. He did. He turned it up. Or really, second quarter. After the after the um, the Browns had those first two drives where they scored a 10 points, this Ravens defense was really, really good, all right? Um, and that's what we want to see, right? Uh, so on that, um, you know, Nick Chubb gets the touchdown. You know, then, then the Ravens get the ball on offense. Gus gets the start. I wasn't expecting that. King Drake, I thought, was going to get a major majority of the work, start the game. No, Gus Edwards out there from the jump. Three straight carries for Gus Edwards. He's looking good. He's running explosive. Uh, it was clear that after last week that Greg Roman was going to have an emphasis on running the ball this game. That was very, very clear. All right. Um, but it was good to see like a guy like Duvernay get a big catch down the sideline one-on-one. I said, okay, now maybe we're going to have a nice mix today. Um, it didn't really work out like that. Um, on that first drive, he called a play. Great Roman called a play I did not like. He he made Lamar Jackson sprint sprint option to his left, uh, roll out to his left, three receivers on that side. And Lamar just has to throw the ball across his body. So, look, this is the issue with that play. One, it cuts off half the field. All right, that's that's the first issue. Second issue is Lamar's a right-handed quarterback, obviously. Why are we making him roll out to his left to throw the ball? That's one of the hardest things a QB can do is throw across his body. And now we had to have him complete that pass for a first down. Difficult. But anyway, Ravens score on that drive. Dustin Tuck kicks the field goal 7-3, okay? Um, next drive, Browns get it. Uh, big play to Amari Cooper to start. All right, big play. 55 yards. Little light cover two. Marlon Humphrey wasn't in the wrong there. He had he had the guard. I think it was Njoku coming underneath. Uh, Geno Stone pulls a good over top over there. It doesn't happen in time. A hey, Good play by Jacoby Brissett. Great play by Amari Cooper. And it's all too, it's feeling all too easy for the Browns to start off, right? But then Geno Stone, Kyle Hamilton, they get a sack. All right, now it's 10-3 Ravens. I mean, sorry, 10-3 Browns. And this is where the game kind of flips on his head a little bit. All right, so now we're into the second quarter. But uh, unfortunately, start off second quarter, Lamar gets sacked on back-to-back -back plays. Um, he did not look comfortable. The O-line was not very good today. Uh, the Browns blitz. They they did pressure Lamar. I'm not gonna say they didn't blitz, but a lot of times the Browns guys were just winning. Their defensive line was just winning, and the Ravens didn't do enough to stop them. Um, the old offensive line looked in sync, didn't look in sync, which led to Lamar kind of having happy feet back there in the pocket and not never really getting settled, uh, especially early in the second quarter. So after he sat, uh, great. It's a great punt by Jordan Stout. I mean, he punts it like 70 yards or 69 yards, something like that, something crazy. Um, but then anyway, that's when the defense gets back out there. PQ blows up Patrick, uh, sorry, PQ blows up Kareem Hunt twice. Back to back plays. This is when I'm talking about him taking the next step. Okay. Um, you got Oway was, was active out there and I put down here after a rough start, the defense is playing well. Okay. They force a punt. Now the Ravens have the ball back. Big punt return by Devin Duvernay gets them inside the, uh, gets them inside the 20, I believe on this punt return. But um, once again, the offense stalls. Now, if it was like kicking the field goals, 10 6. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this offense, the creativity that Greg Roman has in that running game, we do not see it in the passing game, man. Too many times the Ravens are trying to pass out of 13 personnel this game, at least. Uh, that's, you know, one wide receiver, three tight ends. The Ravens need to keep two wide receivers on the field at minimum every play. I'm sorry. I get Oliver's playing well. I get, you know, Boyle can block. All right. There need to be more receiving threats on the field at all times. I don't need to see Oliver, Boyle, and Andrews all on the field at the same time. I just don't need to see it. All right. And the Ravens offense never got into rhythm uh, really early in that first half. I got here, Lamar is not, not comfortable. We're at about six minutes left in the second quarter. 
and Lamar had like Lamar had five pass attempts. Five. How is he supposed to get in the rhythm? He has listen, the run game is playing well. Run game is going good. I'm not saying nothing like that. But your quarterback is an MVP, and he has five passing attempts in the second quarter, bro. Let's get him some more attempts, all right? Uh, he has a big play to Bateman on, on that third down, so good to see that. But the Ravens are very, very predictable on first down. They run the ball almost every single first down. Just once. Can we see a play action on first down? Something. Uh, so Lamar, those lines, they like a good play. Lamar has a great, scam, a great scramble. Uh, the Ravens have a chance to take the lead, and they do. Gus Edwards touchdown, his first of the day. 13, Ravens 13-10, the game is turned on his head. It's a completely different ball game now. Um, excuse me. End of the half, you know, uh, and Joku had a good game. He was getting loose. Uh, they had a DPI call on, on, on Marcus Peters. I wasn't really feeling, but they called it. But this is when Justin Houston steps up. All right. Justin Houston sack, right? Justin Houston strip sack, but the Browns get the ball back. It's pretty much takes him out of field goal range, 13-10 at halftime, all right? Excuse me. Now, second half. Uh, the Ravens get the ball again. Gus Edwards is out there again starting the second half. But the Ravens continue to try to throw the ball with these three tight ends on the field, and it doesn't work. Lamar gets sacked again. They drop back, and Lamar gets sacked again. So Lamar is sacked on back-to-back -back plays. They pretty much come out of halftime and throw the ball three straight times and gain no yards, pretty much. Um, O-line was having a rough day, a really, really rough day. Uh, but the defense was picking up that slack, man. Patrick Queen with another great blitz. Uh, Josh Bynes finished it off. Um, then Calais Campbell, one of the biggest plays of the game, gets a strip sack. Uh, uh, Adafi Owe recovers it. Ravens are in their business now, right? Um, they get down to the they get down to the red zone, get down to the goal line. They throw it to Bateman. He's short by like an inch. Then this when they give it to Gus Edwards at the goal line, twenty to ten. Gus Edwards that power back the Ravens need, finishing off the drives. Beautiful. Um, so now it's 20 to 10 Ravens. Um, and I got down here. Chubb was bottled up. At this point in the game, Chubb wasn't getting loose. That Chubb doesn't get loose really until the fourth quarter. So, um, but the Browns go down there and score that drive. 20 to 13 Ravens. Uh, the Ravens get the ball back. Really only thing notable happened right there. Patrick Ricard has a screenplay, which once again, I do not like. I don't want to see Patrick Ricard have a screenplay. Prochet gets a penalty. I don't think Prochet plays again after that. Not surprising there. But um, anyway, the creativity in the Ravens offense is in the run game, right? So this these are two plays that happen in the Ravens offense. Pump draw. So Lamar just face like he's going to throw the ball. Uh, draw play Justice Hill. Beautiful play. Then the Ravens get to fourth and uh, one again. They go under center. and toss, uh, Andrews goes under center and tosses the ball to Lamar Jackson. That's the play of the game. It's a beautiful play. That creativity that Greg Oman has in the running game, we do not get that in the passing game, bro. We just do not see it. But I love that play. Um, another drop by Bateman. He's got to clean those up again. Uh, Tuck a 55-yard field goal, 23-13, nine minutes left. All right. Um, this is when I noted down in Joku's out. Bynes goes down for a little bit. And this is when Chubb starts to get off. Ravens cannot tackle Nick Chubb on this drive. Uh, ends up with a Kareem Hunt touchdown, 23-20. So nine minutes left. This is when the Ravens go into – Full on, we're going to run the ball and chew this clock down. And Gus Edwards is doing his thing. Um, Rashad Bateman makes a good catch. Under center play action, which the Ravens have gone completely away from. It was this big thing that the Ravens are going to be running some more under center. We have not seen it the last couple of weeks. Especially the under center play action game. We haven't seen it. Um, but, you know, he, he plays, Lamar completes it to uh, Bateman. Then uh, Duvernay gets a nice screen play. Duvernay involved in two plays. Once again, not getting a guy who's going to get most of the dynamic play makes the football. All right, whatever. Mark Andrews carries the ball about five yards. Gus Edwards is getting going. The Ravens are really running down this clock. And this is when, uh, also, Lamar runs up the middle, almost scores. He, just, he, he makes it past that last defender. He, he definitely scores. Then Justice Hill fumbles. I mean, the Ravens are just trying to shoot themselves in the foot. Trying to. Um, and then, you know, it's up to defense to get a stop. Can they do it? Uh, big play, Donovan Peoples-Jones on Marcus Peters. And then there's an offensive pass interference call uh, later in that drive on uh, Amari Cooper with a clear push off on Marcus Peters. And the Ravens kind of get bailed out right there. Not bailed out like it wasn't a foul, but, you know, Marcus Peters was beat on that play. And Cooper really didn't have to do that. But he did. So that's what happened. Then Justin Houston misses a sack to win the game. But if he sacks the Kobe Brissett right there, they don't even get a chance to really kick that field goal because it's going to be too far. They're going to have to go for it on that fourth down. That probably would have changed everything. Oway chases him down. And um, 
Ravens got Cleveland got a total for a 56 yard field goal at first. And then they called this false auto play to make it a 61 yard field goal. But actually, like the Ravens got bailed out because it looks like there was actually the Ravens that were offside. So crazy play. Something that would the referees that actually went in the Ravens' favor. Um, the kick is not even close. It's blocked. Malik Harrison. Um, Ravens run down the clock a little bit. Get the Browns get the ball back. Um, Geno Stone strips Donovan Peoples Jones for the last play of the game. Ravens went 23 20, right? Uh, so good game for the Ravens as far as getting the W and closing out the game. But the offense is still, the running game is going. The passing game has regressed so far. It's embarrassing. Mark Andrews has two targets, no catches. Lamar Jackson has 16 passes on a day. That's attempts, not completions. Lamar Jackson was uh, was 9 for 16 today. 9 for 16. Um, it, It's just um, that the passing game has fell back so far that it's, it's, it's almost laughable. At this point. So that's where the Ravens are right now. They're four and three, a uh, two and oh in the division. They needed they need to get this W day. The uh the Bengals won their game today. They they pretty much destroyed the Falcons. So this was a big game all around. The Browns dropped to, I believe, two and five. So this was a big game. The Ravens need to win this game, but they weren't overly impressive. It is AFC North football, so it's gonna be a little rough, it's gonna be a little rugged. But you wish excuse me, you wish the Ravens could do it in a more impressive fashion. I like what I saw from the defense. I do. The defense is not the issue. The defense has been the strength of this team for the last month. The offense is the one that's been felt as, as fallen to the wayside. When the Ravens' offense is going, they can throw the ball. Of course, the running game is always going to be there. That's what Greg Roman does. The running game is going to be there. I'm not worried about that. This passing game needs serious help. And it's not just as simple as, go get a wide receiver. The wide receivers have to play. How many times out there are we going to see three tight ends, one wide receiver on the field, and then y'all try to throw the ball out of the formation? Well, y'all run out the formation because it's obvious that you're, that's what you're going to do. It's too predictable. It's too obvious. Um, yeah, man. And just uh, long developing players that take too long. The old line was getting hammered today. Roman calls some short passing plays, right? But listen, listen, listen. Listen. The Ravens win. That's what it is. All right. Give me your thoughts about the game. Uh, 23-20 Ravens. Um, they on to the uh, Buccaneers midweek Thursday game. And we'll see what happens from there, man. It's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.